Our first presentation deals with the future of digital and loyalty marketing. Our speakers are Stephen Avola, VP of Business Development for ProLogic, and Bill Lipsky, VP Center Store East Region for Super Value. Gentlemen, the podium is yours. Great. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our session this morning. Uh, as John mentioned, my name is Steve Avola. I am the Vice President of Business Development with ProLogic Retail Services. On the phone with me is uh, Bill Lipsky. He's Vice President of Center Store for Super Value um, Eastern Region. Good morning. Uh, before we begin, we just wanted to give a uh, company overview of, of ProLogic and Super Value. Um, for those of you who don't know, ProLogic Retail Services, we are the largest provider of loyalty and digital marketing solutions to the independent grocery industry. Our customer base includes 60 banners, uh, about 1,900 stores, and over 11 million active households. We process over 1 million member transactions annually, and members account for over $4 billion in sales annually. Some of our uh, retail partners include uh, Shop and Save, Lowe's Foods, Food Town, Homeland, Remke Markets, and, and many others, and we have over 20 years' experience in loyalty and digital marketing services specifically uh, for the grocery industry. Bill, I'll let you uh, give a quick overview of Super Value. Thanks, Steve. From a Super Value perspective, uh, one of the largest grocery wholesalers and retailers in the United States, uh, annual sales approximately $18 billion. We serve customers across the United States through a network of 22, over 2,200 stores composed of primarily independent business. Uh, we do have five uh, traditional corporate retail store, uh, store banners, Shop and Save St. Louis, Hornbachers, Cub in the Minneapolis area, um, Farm Fresh in the Tidewater, Virginia, and Shoppers in the Baltimore, D.C. Headquartered in Minneapolis, Supervi has a, approximately 40,000 employees. Um, again, the majority of our business is on the independent network right now. Great. Thanks, Bill. Uh, before we get get started, what I'd really like to do, I'd like to start out by talking about the growing importance of loyalty and digital marketing, really based on the challenges that are facing uh, many retailers, specifically independents. Now, we're certainly all familiar with the, con with the consolidation that's happening in the industry, driven by the national chains and even some of the super regionals. Uh, just the latest one you all may, uh, you may all be familiar with is the, the Safeway ac acquisition of Andronicos in Northern California. So it seems like every week or every month we hear about another acquisition or, or more consolidation. Uh, in addition, there's the, really the pressure of the non-traditional food retailers. Uh, they continue to increase their sales of, uh, of uh, typical grocery items. Uh, these are drug stores, warehouse, dollar stores, e-commerce, limited assortment stores, fresh format, even farmers markets. I mean, just the proliferation of farmers markets. I'm sure you're all familiar with that just in, in your home communities. Um, and just recently there was an article that Progressive Grocer and Supermarket News had about uh, Amazon uh, uh, going to open approximately 2,000 stores in the next 10 years. So it just continues to grow. The pressure for these independents and, and smaller retailers continues uh, to grow. You think about the national drug chains. Um, Again, they all uh, really increase in the sales of typical grocery products. They all have very sophisticated loyalty and digital marketing programs. In many instances, the national uh, drug chains know more about a, a small independent um, shoppers than that independent shopper actually knows about them. So you can see the continued pressure um, be, that's be put on these retailers in, the, in this fierce competition puts pressure on sales and margin. In a, in a small independent, it's never going to win the pricing war against the national chains of these uh, big uh, super regionals. Bill, tell us, if you will, a little bit about the challenges um, faced by super values independent retailers, if you would. So, Steve, in addition to what you talk about with, with the additional footprint and, and square retail square footage that, that is in markets today facing the independent, there's two other areas that others others face that are moving rapidly and what you find in an independent space or even in in a in a corporate environment is is being able to address that and on those two areas really are the involvement of digital um, talk about e-commerce and, and and those areas um, that continue to evolve and the second one is shopper behavior um, with with super value in our independent base what we try to work with them on is finding the sweet spot that addresses those two rapidly moving areas the shopper behavior is obviously the onset of the millennials but also the the core customer that has been in these stores for quite some time moving towards a wellness 
uh, area, but also looking at new items and, and that type of space that, that is produced from the CPG environment. So finding that sweet spot that can address the involvement of digital and shopper behavior is critical to the success of the independent owner um, uh, our supermarket operator moving forward. Others have done very well in that space and others are, are lagging behind, so we, we, we like to work with them on that. Enhancing those platforms that we have from a loyalty perspective is critical. Uh, we've partnered, and you'll hear us talk more throughout this presentation, on partnerships and trying to find the right partnerships to, 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 to add to that offering of our existing super value business is, is key but also understanding what the key performance indicators as they evolve into that space of digital and shopper behavior outside of just normal sales is critical here that, uh, from, from an independent uh, headwinds that they're facing. Great. Thanks, Bill. And, and, sure. And Bill, as you talk about that, there certainly is opportunities uh, for grocers now um, to leverage um, technology and data that's now available not only to the national uh, players, to the Kroger's and the Safeways of the world, but really is now affordable and accessible to, to all retailers. Um, and they use this technology to capture and analyze shopper data, um, and it's affordable, as I said, and it's easy, and it's easy to use. Um, uh, grocers can and must use this technology now uh, to analyze their data and to better engage their shoppers to provide, to provide a more personalized and rewarding shopping experience. I mean, if you think about it, shoppers expect that these days. Every, every retail industry now is using data to provide a more personalized and engaging shopping experience, whether it be uh, Starbucks or Panera Bread or um, you know, gas, gas stations, convenience stores, even movie houses. I mean, the last time I was in a, a, a movie, you know, they advertised their uh, StubHub Rewards program, and it's all about collecting customer data, right, so they understand their customers, they understand their behaviors, their preferences, so they're able to better engage uh, and communicate and build a stronger relationship with that customer. And those opportunities are certainly out there for, for independents and certainly should be used by, by grocery and independents to help them identify their top shoppers, to help them understand their buying habits, right? They want to be able to promote to them intelligently and they want to be able to measure quantitative results. And they really need to do this um, in order to stay competitive uh, in today's marketplace because if they don't, they're really going to find themselves way behind and it's just going to be impossible uh, to keep up. These days, over 78% of shoppers are willing to allow retailers to use their data to provide a more personalized shopping experience. It's all about a value exchange today. I mean, back in the day when these uh, first programs came to be, they started out in the grocery industry. We're all familiar with the, you know, the loyalty card, quote unquote, but that was really nothing more than a discount card. And it really has evolved since then where it's got to be a two-way value exchange. If a customer is willing to give information to the retailer, my name, my address, my email, my cell phone, there better be value in return for me as a customer. And if there isn't, I'm going to quickly abandon that program and abandon that retailer because I know there are other retailers providing that type of personalized, uh, engaging shopping experience um, that, that, that retailers are looking for. So if you think about the power, the, the, really the power in the data uh, to identify shoppers um, is, is so important today, and it's so important especially when, it, when you're looking at a, a retailer's top shoppers, right? Everybody knows the 80-20 the the, you know, rule that 20% you know, of your customers bring in 80% of your business. So now that using this uh, loyalty and data analytics that you have access to, you really need to understand who these top shoppers are because they're the ones, if you look at the data, that are really driving your business. Um, top shoppers in the, re in the retail industry, this isn't news, uh, but it, it's, it bears repeating. They spend the most. They have the lowest defection rates. They visit more frequently. They buy higher items with higher average price. They buy items with higher average gross margin. And they buy, this is very important, they buy from more departments and categories. But even with that, when you look at the data, even a, a retailer's top shoppers typically only spend 50 to 70% of their monthly budget at a particular retailer. So even though you think, this is my top shopper, I don't need to worry about him or her, I'm getting most of their spend, in reality, you're not getting most of their spend, and those are the customers you need to worry about because you have a limited marketing budget, and you've got to make good use of that budget and make sure you get an ROI. So if you would, now that I've, I've kind of given some uh, foundation there, tell us how SuperValue is working with your retailers who are using Shopper data to really help them drive their performance. 
Yes, yeah, Steve. So, so SuperValue works and, and has a very strong professional service department. Uh, we utilize in, in, in-house and third-party programs. Uh, one of those, uh, those areas is loyalty and, and fuel, fuel rewards programs that have been in, in place in, in certain independents and, and a large portion of our independents for quite some time. As that has built out, working towards identifying that top shopper and, and, and marketing to that top shopper to get them to spend more than that 50 to 70 percent of their monthly budget is critical. Uh, the traditional retailer space has been driven around driving sales. It's been a, it's been primarily done through a, through a circular, um, a, a weekly ad event, uh, or sometimes additional ad events, and that can, that, that'll typically drive sales across all levels. But what we found and we're able to identify is very similar to what you've talked about here: is the ability to to, to market stronger to a primary, get them to convert up and upward migrate. And then also looking at secondary and building them in to become a top shopper. I'm going to talk a little bit here about uh, some promotions that, that have been in markets before, um, but we've tried to take that a step further. I'm going to provide an example here. The, the, the top shopper piece in, in the groups that we work with today, and some are at different levels, what we do from a super value standpoint is try and share best practice. And those back, best practices involve an ROI. Those best practices involve an ability to market and utilize what they're doing today. And, and it also provides an ability to look at that instead of a traditional wholesale and say we're going to ship X amount of cases, what's it really doing on the customer facing side to drive profitability, but also additional offerings to that consumer that is classified as a top shopper that they're able to, to, to have a higher spend than 50 to 70% of their monthly budget and you can continue to get them to migrate up. Great. Thanks, Bill. So you know everybody, I want to take a step back. You know, we talk about the importance of, of loyalty and digital marketing, understanding uh, your top shoppers, understanding all your shoppers, their behaviors, their preferences, their needs, and really using that information and using digital platforms to better connect with that customer, to better engage that customer, to drive sales, to drive transactions, to help them uh, to to for department penetration, right? To understand where they aren't shopping in your store and to try to drive them to those to those departments. We all know that Kroger is doing exactly that. Um, they're very successful. You know, you read about it in all the publications. Uh, they've delivered 50 consecutive quarters of same store sales growth and 12 straight years of, of market share growth. And the reason they're able to do this is because they have a technology and promotional strategy that are highly, uh, very highly integrated. Um, they really use their customer first strategy. If you think about uh, the thing what Kroger is doing, uh, they work with Dun Humby, which is now 84.51, which is their in-house uh, uh, data uh, partner. Th- they tell us that 95% of Kroger's growth over the last 10 years has come from their existing customers. Again, it's their customer-first strategy. So everybody is everybody's always looking at trying to um, bring new customers into a store, which is always important. But by using the data and analytics in their digital platform, what they're able to do is take a look at their existing customers, the customers that are raising their hands saying, you know, we like shopping here, you know, we like our experience with Kroger. And, but to understand what those customers aren't doing in the store and what they can, how they can drive their sales, uh, drive transactions with those existing uh, customers, and that's what Kroger has been able to do uh, very successfully, which continues to increase their sales and in- increase their g- growth, is really focusing on those core customers that are already shopping in the store. We all, as I mentioned, we all have limited budgets, so you want to make sure you get the best ROI on that budget. In many cases, that's really taking a look at those good shoppers who are already in your store who would be willing to spend more you know, with the right incentive, uh, with the right communication, with the right engagement. I mean, Bill, a question, at, Bill, a question just came in here. With Kroger, are you talking about the Kroger banners specifically? Kroger has a lot of different banners. Do all of them have the same program? Are they operated independently, or is it centralized? So I, what I think Steve's talking about here is, is, the, is the traditional Kroger footprint. So they have, again, they have these, think about Ralph's and, and the other ones in that same vein. Um, I, I think, Steve, you're referencing more what the Kroger core model looks like and how they go to market through the primary, the, most of the United States. Thank yes, you. that's correct. Thanks, Bill. Um, and one thing, you know, one thing that Kroger's trying to do, uh, which is funny because you think about, if you think about loyalty and digital marketing and the future of digital and the future of marketing, right? It's 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 very uh, you know it's mobile, it's it's multi-channel, it's futuristic. You know, if you think about everything that's going on, but what are we trying to do uh, with this technology? In Kroger, 
you know, their their long term um, relationship with shoppers, they say they want it akin to to be akin to a local butcher. So we have all this technology, all this digital, um, all this uh, uh, new new technology as I mentioned. And what we're trying to do with it is really go back to how it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. When as you walk, when you walk into a supermarket, you have that feeling that you know this is my market, this is my retailer. You know the managers, you know the workers, you know the you know the butchers. It's you know it's being it's walking into a store and having the store manager the front end manager come up and say hello and and knowing that you shop there twice a week and you're one of their best shoppers and he walks you down to the to the uh, butcher shop because he knows what type of meat you like to buy he walks you over to produce because he knows the type of produce you like to buy so you know that used to happen in the day and that was really a key differentiator uh, for independence and now we have all this technology that's trying to do the same thing to try to help us better engage that customer letting them know we know. Uh, what your preferences are. We know where you like to shop. We know when you like to shop, and we're going to really uh, reward you and, and promote you based on that. So it's really come full circle, right? We want to have the same experience with that customer, but now we need to do it in a way that that customer likes to be communicated to, and that's via digital. Um, it, it's via multi-channel. It's via web. It's via all those um, those marketing channels. Bill, so um, having talked about Kroger, um, tell us a little bit about how loyalty marketing has really enhanced the success of of the shop and save chain. I know they're they're in the, the Pittsburgh market and, and they get a lot of uh, tough competition in that market, but they've been they've been doing pretty well using their uh, loyalty and digital marketing platform. Correct? That is correct. And 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 very similar to what you talked about with Kroger and what we talked about previously is is the same ideology as driving primary, converting secondary, and and how could they how can they continue to enhance in those elements uh, as, as you look at digital and, and, and that transformation, and then they can try and understand customer behavior outside of just spend levels um, and what they're purchasing. So but we're going to talk on two examples here in a minute, but um, you know, one of them will be uh, uh, what they've done to, to drive primary and then look at secondary. I'll talk to that. And then Steve will talk to what they've done from a competitive response um, or, or something that happened in the market that they were able to take advantage of and begin to build customer profiles based off two uniquely different, two, two, two uniquely different areas. So the, as Steve had talked about, so Shop and is primarily in the Western PA market. They're, they're, they compete with some heavy players like Giant Eagle, Walmart, limited assortment stores, Aldi is, is here as well, Target. Very similar to what's across uh, most of the United States, you know, from a, from a regional competitor and also the national competitors. Um, so the, one of the one of the areas that they they continue to be faced with is obviously the shopper behavior um, that we talk about. They've had a legacy fuel program for quite some time that has been core to the success. So they've been running a, if you want to call a fuel and loyalty program. Uh, as what they are, they've been able to reward customers based off purchases for several years. As market competition came in and the shopper behavior changes that we had talked about earlier, they, they looked at a couple different ways uh, to get started to understand more about the primary and understand more about the secondary and start to recondition where their spend points were going to be from an ROI. So if we're going to look at doing some type of continuity, which I'm going to talk about here, what's the right ROI because we can, we can go out and do that, but at the same time, are we going to get the return on the investment for, for what we're trying to do and in, in, in sending a customer to continue to buy more and put more in their basket so they're not going somewhere else? Run the promotion. What are you doing after the promotion to keep that customer engaged? That's, that's the, the playbook that Steve talked about uh, earlier is continuing to keep that engagement because you can continue to throw things at a customer and it becomes white space. And, and so how do they move beyond that? And then as, as in, in those, those two areas, and, and as they look at the key performance indicators, another success of the Shop and Save group has been able to look at those key performance indicators and saying, okay, this worked, this didn't work, or this enhanced, this didn't enhance. I used to tell them that in an inlay print, or I used to tell them that on a, in a circular. Now I want to communicate them through email. I want to communicate through text. I want to communicate them through social media. Those, those areas are critical as, as we evolve in the digital space. So um, ProLogic, again, has been a key component of the go-to-market strategy. The partnership there has been, been, been around for quite some time, and they continue to evolve in, in working with each other to find uh, alternatives or enhancements in that sweet spot I talked on earlier 
and the conversion to digital, and the ability to, to talk to all different levels of shoppers. Um, enhanced digital marketing campaign, they interface with the web and email. It's critical in that space. Interface with the field provider, so can you offer increased promotional activity instead of just additional market basket? Ability to market the primary shoppers in the communication points, whether it's in-home, in-store, or digitally. And then provide ability to leverage additional vendor-funded opportunities. The, the, the sweet spot for the CPG, the consumer packaged good companies, to say, you know, I'm going to try and understand the, the product that I'm offering you, what customers are buying it, one, what other ones are buying different product or competing product that I can work with as well, too. Not that that's new, but there's an involvement there on the consumer packaged good side as well. Steve, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll talk about um, one of the promotions that we utilized for the primary customer. Sure. And conversion sure, to so. secondary. And as, as Bill uh, gets into this promotion, just again, keep in mind as we're talking about loyalty and digital marketing and the future of it, no matter what type of program you have, what type, of, whether it's a, a you know web or app or in lane or kiosk, you know it all starts with good data. I mean, everybody talks about data today, right? Big data. And still, the problem with data is even though you have it, a lot of times you don't have the people in an organization or you don't have the tools to really dig into the data. So. You can start collecting all the data you want, but without good uh, actionable data and tools to quickly get into that data, make it actionable, and have those channels that you can quickly use to communicate to that customers, all the data in the world isn't going to matter. It's just going to, uh, you know, you're going to waste time and space and, and resources if you can't really get to that data. And, and Shop and Save through the, the platform they have, they really do a great job having it with the data, analyzing the data, and making that data actionable to, to uh, engage those customers. And, and Bill will talk about this first uh, program, this continuity program. Thanks, Steve. So, so the Turkey, Turkey promotion is the one I'm going to talk about first. And, and so the continuity program, the Turkey promotions have been around whether it's free, it's a reduced price, and, and different retailers will, will, will run some type of free promotion. They might do it through a stamp card. They might do it through, through perhaps a loyalty platform that they're utilizing. What we tried to do with the Shop and Save group over time was build it to be real time to, 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 to leverage additional data to tell the customer, um, you know, here's where you're at, here's what you, you're left to spend. But if we can give them additional elements to, to, to make it more real time than that, we, we entered into that space. And so using the fuel example as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as an example, um, you know, Shop and Save customer is able to buy groceries and save on gas, and it's a real-time application. We utilize the turkey promotion the same way, where they can, they can log on, get a turkey tracker in lane, uh, but also log on through the through their website or through the app to say, here's where you are, here's what you spent, here's what you have left to buy. And so, if we're able to to, to tell the customer what they're what they're able to, to to get closer towards that spend, and again, spends are 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 literally. Uh, semantic. You, you can choose to whatever spend you can do. The, in this market, the, the, the thresholds that they put out made sense and, and was effective. They've been running this turkey promotion for several years, and, 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 the, and the scorecard that they continue to look at is, am I, am I getting more primary to spend up? Am I getting secondary to, to convert over? I'll show you some examples of that here in a second. Um, they did a five-week spend, um, and they also did a two-week redemption. They leveraged all media, being television and radio, to, to um, to talk about what that promotion looks like, building the anticipation. And then the real-time tracking, both, both in lane and online, was critical. Um, and, and, and again, it showed the success of the program. So let's look at uh, two examples of how it performed. Um, so if you, if you want to go to the next slide here, Steve. So promotion qualifiers. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's a set amount of, of top shoppers, uh, level top shoppers. They look at the, whether it's quadrants or levels. Um, the, the, the platform they utilize has, has multiple levels. Top four levels make up the, the top shopper uh, deciles for the Shop and Save group. They have a baseline that they utilize through four-week cycles. What they're able to see as, as, as the promotion ticked off, they, were, they saw a, a, a generous upward tick of promotion qualifiers. So they were engaging that level, levels one through four to say, okay, I am, am engaged. Am I going to spend more in that basket? Am I going to be engaged to, to get that turkey? But at the same time, am I buying more in that basket than what I have before? Because the, the, the argument to that was, well, they were in my store before. But if you can get them to spend up, you've won. So that driving primary is, is, is critical in, the, in, in this type of environment, my environmental spend on, on a promotion of this magnitude. Um, Go ahead to the next slide, Steve. Let's look at how did it perform. Uh, and again, this is a this is this is a sample of one they ran, uh, you know, a, a year or two back. Uh, 
So again, you had the, the, the levels one through four. 85% of the top shoppers qualified, over 90% redemption rate. So they, they bought the turkey, they bought the additional items that came with the turkey, were able to identify that, were able to go back to the CPG companies and say, here's how this performed. We were able to look at future promotions, to, to, to look at offering them something up additionally through some of the, the, the different um, uh, platforms that the Shop and Save group has, whether it's an email, whether it's a, sp a specific campaign on digital. But the, the bottom line here is 85% of the top shoppers qualified, 90% redeemed. So that customer remained engaged through a, cre a key selling season. And, and, and what's not on here, you know, the secondary customer began to spend up. And so if you had a level 5, 6, or 7, you were able to identify 5, 6, and 7 as potential move-ups into the 4, 3, 2, and 1 category and begin to market to them differently as well too. So they continue to leverage their ad campaign. They continue to leverage these types of continuities. They do multiple um, events like this throughout the year. Um, the turkey one is one of the larger ones just because of the holiday, but uh, it continues to provide the dividends that the shop and save owners uh, have, have wanted to get into as they, they got heavily into this space. Another one is the competitive impact, uh, and there's, there's multiple examples of that, but uh, Steve will talk about one that they utilize with a store that had just converted over into a shop and safe group. So Steve? Great. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, th this is a, a great uh, demonstration of really how effective a well-executed uh, data-driven loyalty and digital marketing program can be. And as you think about programs today, they really need to be seamless and simple for your shopper. If, the, if there's any hurdles or, or difficulty at all to, to be in a promotion uh, or some type of offer, then the customer is just going to throw up their hands. And you know, I speak to many, many retailers throughout the country, day in and day out. It's my job. And there are still many retailers out there doing programs like this, but they're doing them uh, with tape, with, with, with POS printouts where you still have to save the receipt. You add up the, 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 the totals. You mail in your receipts by a certain date. You get a card mailed back to you. You take that card into the retailer, and then you get your, your free turkey, your free promotion, or whatever. So there, there are still retailers out there doing that, uh, which is just crazy if you think about it today, especially with the technology that's out there. The way shoppers want to interact and behave, it's, it's just not going to work anymore. So you need to involve. You need to look at these, these digital options, and, and you need to get on board. Or, or as I said earlier, you're going to be way behind the eight ball, and it's going to be impossible to catch up. And uh, thanks, Bill, for that. And here's another great uh, um, uh, promotional example of using um, several, like a multi-pronged approach to a, a digital uh, marketing campaign. So as Bill mentioned, one of the Shop and Save stores, um, they were impacted uh, by flooding, or their competitors were impacted um, by some flooding that occurred. And this flooding uh, closed two of their major uh, competitors. So those competitors' customers needed to find another place to shop. So this was really a great opportunity for this uh, Shop and Save uh, store to try to increase sales, increase members, uh, increase customers. So they quickly put together a, a multi-pronged uh, marketing approach uh, that had some, uh, some pretty good uh, um, uh, things that they wanted to, wanted to hit. They wanted to increase the member count in their program. They wanted to increase transactions and sales on their card or sales uh, from program members. They wanted to increase their top shoppers, right? Again, we talk about the importance of, of increasing top shoppers because as your top shoppers go, so goes your business. If you're increasing top shoppers, your business is thriving. If you're losing top shoppers, you know, that, that's a really, uh, really a red flag. They wanted to increase zip code penetration, especially in those areas where the competitors were. They wanted to um, find out how many customers from those zip codes were coming to their stores and increase that penetration and hold on to those customers. And they wanted to, uh, as I said, in, uh, to retain new customers that came into the stores during this, um, during this, this flooding period. So what they did, as I mentioned, it was a, a multi-pronged approach. So one of the things they wanted to do they wanted to make sure they had as, uh, all the member profiles updated as much as they could because if you've got members coming into your store, maybe they're secondary shoppers, not shopping that much, but they do use their, uh, their part of your program. They use their card, their, their alternate ID. Um, they wanted to target any customer that came into the lane, self-identified with their card, being a, a program member, but they were missing some demographic information. So they offered any customer that was just missing demographic information uh, an entry into a drawing to win a $25 uh, gift certificate. So again, this was just targeted toward customers in the program who came in the store, 
um, use their car, the self-identified in lane that were missing, uh, maybe they were missing an email address, they were missing uh, an address, they were missing a cell phone number, they got a specific uh, promotion or offer in lane or via email asking them to update their demographic information and they'd be entered into uh, a drawing. So that was one, uh, one marketing strategy that was happening. At the same time, there was a new member bounce back offer. So anytime a, a new member came into the store and, and signed up for the program the first time or used their card for the first time, they got an offer to receive double fuel um, to receive double uh, fuel points on the next purchase of fifty dollars or more. So again, this offer was just to customers, new customers who came into the store for the first time. If they took advantage of that offer and they came in and spent fifty dollars or more, they got double fuel purchase. Then they got a second offer, and the second offer was for free um, water or free bananas. And if they took advantage of that offer, then they got a third offer, which was a free, uh, free bacon and a free milk. And again, these offers are just to new customers, so it's a way to get them back in the store. All these offers required additional spend of a certain amount, $50 or more, and they required the customer to come back by a certain date. So you're really trying to drive um, sales. You're trying to drive frequency just to new shoppers because the more the shopper comes into the store, the more comfortable they get with the store. They know the departments. They know where to look for things. The better chance you have of holding on to that customer because we all understand the, um, you know, the attrition rate of new customers is 70 to 80 percent. So if you can get them in there three times, four times, five times, then they're starting to feel comfortable uh, in that store. A third approach during this marketing campaign was they wanted to target do a short-term continuity program just to those customers who came in from the affected zip codes. So customers who were close to the competitors, lived in those zip codes, lived in those areas, they got a specific um, uh, communication that offered that customer that they would get $5 off any time they spent $100 uh, or more. And this continuity program ran during the period in which those competitive stores were now reopening. So it was a grand opening of their stores you know, after the flooding. So this continuity program was targeting customers to say, hey, continue to shop with us, continue to spend $100 or more, and we're going to give you a $5 off coupon. So these are multiple approaches happening at one time that could only be done through a, a very comprehensive, sophisticated uh, digital platform. And it was, it was very successful because, as I said in the beginning, with these programs, you want to make, you have a limited marketing budget. You want to make sure you're targeting the right groups in the right manner, and you want to know what the, the ROI is on these programs. And if you look at some of these results, uh, the, it increased the number of member households by 18%. So those are people that were raising their hand saying, yes, I want to be in the program. Um, that was increased by 18%. Um, they increased member transactions by 16% and member sales by 12%. They increased total transactions by 11% and total sales by 10%. They increased the number of top shoppers. Um, those are shoppers spending anywhere from you know, $50 to uh, uh, $50 or more a week. They increased the number of top shoppers by 17%. They increased the zip code penetration by an average of 35% in the three affected zip codes. And they increased the number of new shoppers from about 2,200 in the previous four-week period to 3,300. So a very successful program. And, and the way they were able to do it, again, was through very targeted, very precise marketing that could be done through their digital platform. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the last slide. So you know, the future of loyalty di in digital marketing. If you, know, if you continue to think about everything we talked about, uh, you know, mobile technology, you know, everybody hears about mobile every day. It's mobile, you know, mobile pay. Uh, it's mobile everything, and, and mobile you know, continues to grow at light speed. So uh, mobile is just going to continue to increase, continue to be important, continue to be uh, used by shoppers. So you really have to be thinking about mobile. E-commerce, we're all familiar with e-commerce. E-commerce continues to grow. Um, and everybody's going to have to have some type of e-commerce service that you want to be able to offer your customers. You may have some, just some e-commerce customers, some in-store only customers, but you'll have many customers that are going to use both, and uh, retail is going to have to have that option. There's location-aware technology. We've all heard about beacons. You know, that, that allows you to do specific offers to customers when they're in specific locations within a retailer, and some of our partners are already using uh, beacon technology that is tied to their loyalty platform. And if you think really where uh, digital and loyalty marketing is going, you know, the use of data to provide, really to provide relevant content, stories, ideas to be more helpful to your shoppers and to save them time really is going to be just as important as you know, a, a dollars off or points or other types of promotions that they get today. So that's really where, um, where this is going. Um, Bill, I, I know you, you offer your uh, SV Digital platform 
uh, really to get customers uh, toward this loyalty and digital marketing uh, future and what's really going to help them continue to drive their business. Uh, do you see some other trends really that's driving the future of digital marketing? Yes, yeah, Steve. The, 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 the additional trends, uh, again, are, are going to be continued to evolve. Looking at what we, what we had talked about before with regard to mobile technology, from a super value standpoint, one of the things we've been working on with our independent base is, is developing uh, a platform that they can take as sort of a plug and play. When we, when we look at those three areas of mobile technology, e-commerce, and, and location aware technology, whether it be Beacon or something else in, in that, that could be utilized in store, we, we, ask ourselves, we ask ourselves the question, because our independent base is, is so diverse, can it be scalable, can it be integratable? Because ultimately it has to tie back into the customer experience. Super value from a, from a professional services, which is very robust for us from an offering to our independent base, has developed a platform called SV Digital, which addresses the mobile technology. It provides uh, an interactive website. It provides an app. It provides uh, additional offerings, whether it's fuel or loyalty or one-to-one -one shopper engagement that could, could be real-time to, to, to begin to get into that space from mobile technology. E-commerce is, is many different areas, and I'm sure some of the folks on this phone are very familiar with e-commerce e or, or part of this, uh, this web conference. Um, as that continues to evolve, what's the right space, and, and how do you get into something like that? Because there's, there's third-party programs that, that you're able to look at, and there's ones that have success, and there's ones that you read about where, where the opportunity exists. Again, that uh, same piece, can it be scalable, and can it be integratable than what we're currently doing today? Um, Location-based, again, will continue to evolve. Um, I think the, the, the piece here that we want to uh, uh, continue to talk about and, and keep, keep our eye on is as these things evolve, traditional grocery retailers, whether it's in, in, in a pure brick and mortar store or if it's, it's the involvement of dollar or limited assortment or if it's these new formats that come in or even mass, they've traditionally communicated in, 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 in two different areas. They would have an in-store communication piece, which is the customer experience through signage in a circular or an ad that goes out. And they communicate in home. And they would communicate in home through a circular that got mailed out or would come in a newspaper or they would be able to, have, uh, be able to market on television or radio. As, as, the, as, as technology evolves and those communication points become critical, the key trend or the key ask a retailer should be thinking about is, how do I expand my space so that I'm, I'm able to effectively communicate in home, in store, and digitally? And any campaign that you do, whether it's a, a, you know, something as, as, as simple as a turkey continuity or something based as, 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 as a competitive uh, intrusion or a competitive opportunity that you talked about, being able to, to answer those questions and say, I, I can communicate in the digital space or I can communicate in, in, in this, this continued move in store, in home, and digitally, retailers will win. And, and I think that that future continues to evolve um, because, and I'm going to go back to the two points I said in the beginning, is the digital space continues to evolve and shopper behavior continues to evolve. If you're able to communicate to those three, same three points I talked about earlier, you have an opportunity to remain competitive and win in the long run. Great. Thank you, Bill. Uh, that's the end of our uh, session uh, presentation. We'll uh, be happy to take some questions. I think we have a few minutes. Yes, we have a few minutes, and a question did come in. Uh, I don't think you answered it along the way, but why should a retailer direct its marketing budget to shoppers that are already buying from them? Maybe they're in that 20% uh, even. Um, yeah, that's a that, that's a very good question. I mean, a lot some retailers think you know these are my best shoppers. These aren't the shoppers I need to worry about. I need to worry about those shoppers who are just shopping occasionally, or some new shoppers that come in the store. But as I talked about earlier, it's those it's those top shoppers that's really driving your business. So you may think you have. Uh, your top shoppers and, and they're happy shopping at your store, but without the data and without the analytics, without looking at your your customers, you know what's happening to those shoppers? Are you losing top shoppers? Because if you lose a top shopper, um, you know how many it takes up, up almost 10 new shoppers to replace that one top shopper. So you really want to make sure you're holding on to your top shoppers because they are driving your business. And and you may think that this is great. I have those. My top shoppers are always going to be with me. You know, we talked about really co competitively what's happening, what the challenges are. And with all these other formats opening up and all these other opportunities, the customers have to shop different places to shop online. You know, with limited budget, it's really that top shopper you need to look at. And we mentioned that, 
even it, with your top shop, they're only spending maybe 50 to 70 percent of, 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 of their monthly spend in your store. So that's really where your best opportunity is, and those are the customers you want to hold on to. One final question quickly. What does ProLogic do specifically? Uh, Pro, we provide the loyalty and digital marketing platform for independent retailers. So a lot of the stuff that we talked about, we have many retail partners that, that we provide a loyalty and digital marketing platform that enables these retailers to deliver the real-time, in-lane, in multi-channel communication, uh, promotions, offers, and rewards to that retailer's uh, shoppers. We do this because we host uh, the database for the customer, uh, for that retailer. We collect item level transaction data on every customer. As I mentioned, that's really the, the foundation of, of any good program is starting with good customer data. So we collect the data, we put it in a data warehouse, it's the retailer's data, but we start uh, segmenting that data and start profiling those customers so that retailer can understand who my customers are, who are my top shoppers, who are my new shoppers, um, who are my top shoppers that aren't buying any paper products in my store. They have that data and analytics, and then they can use the platform to start targeting and messaging to those customers to better engage them, to pr provide a more personalized and relevant shopping experience, and to help increase sales uh, within, that, uh, within the retailer. Excellent. Thank you both very much. That was really, really well done. For more information, please visit ProLogicRetail.com.